Uh, Logan Internet and Happy Pi Day. We got a Raspberry Pi 4.0. And I modeled it up with uh, some of the connectors. Not all of them, but some of them at least. And uh, that's saved in a part somewhere else. Then I've renamed or resaved it as a new part. And I'm going to make a wooden laser cut case for this. For Pi Day, mainly. But uh, hey, why not make a case for a Raspberry Pi? So, went ahead and already threw in my material thick and my kerf. And I'm thinking, getting halfway creative with this. But uh, before we do that, need to uh, put a little bit more in here because this is about the biggest heat sink that uh, you'll find for a Raspberry Pi that's or at least commonly used and uh, here's just a easy stand-in for a 40 millimeter fan so that heat sink needs to go on there I don't know if it can be centered but I'll try So drawing out some lines here. So it's like a target for the center there. All right. Now if I insert a part, seat sink, and I want surface bodies as well. And I'm going to turn that off. Because that doesn't quite always work great during a rebuild. Doing it manually afterwards seems to do better. And I have to think about the flow pattern. I'm thinking there's going to be more airflow this way. And this will be all blocked off. This will be mostly blocked off. This will be less blocked off. So the airflow is kind of like that, or actually it's out both ways and a fan on top. So I think lining these up makes sense then. All right, so now it has a heat sink. And I'm going to insert the fan. Not sure I'm going to locate the fan just yet, but uh, I might have to. We'll see. Uh, so I think it's time to start actually working on some wood bits. So start with a general shape. And let's see, I want. I think five millimeters below. And might as well go, well, let's go from here to there. Let's put that there for now, because I want to see, this is 10.35, so if we figure there might be fans as much as maybe 15 in that size. They're actually fans bigger even than that, but I wouldn't want to use them with a Raspberry Pi. So, <laughs> All right. And I'll just go coincident with there. And coincident with there. I haven't fully fleshed out in my mind what this is going to look like yet, so just kind of uh, designing it and seeing where it takes me. I think if I go the other way by like a millimeter, I don't want to merge that. And I'll convert that and go this way by my material thickness. And there. Thinking 
that to support the board, I could just have uh, like engraving cutouts, like about a millimeter deep that the board could just kind of slot into. And then the four sides will kind of just push into the, around the board like that. And then the four sides plus the board will slide into the bottom and then the top can slide onto that. At least that's the plan so far. How far apart are these? Almost a millimeter. All right, maybe I want this to be a even slightly smaller, say 0.75 millimeters. If it'll let me say anything at all. There we go. And I'll just do a plane. And I'll convert that. All right, so we got two of the sides, not fleshed out obviously, but we got two of the sides started. Let's go in here. And draw on this one. Let's see, I think these pieces should slot into the front and I want it to be closed off. So let's try saying this is equal to safe distance and this is equal to safe distance. And for the time being, just go coincident and coincident. All right. And then it's going to go out that way by material thickness. And let's go here as well. 0.75 that way. And I'll just convert this back one. Let's say this is equal to material thickness as well. All right. So we need to figure out how these are supposed to connect. I do want to trim those down. So I'll just convert these. Do it cut to remove the excess. All right, then let's try putting some fingers here. Actually, you know what, before I do that, I think it'd be better to finish putting in the the top and the bottom, or at least put the start of the top and bottom in. There we go. And the top as well. Incident, coincident, and equal. All right, and let's see, we want to be offset from here, uh, equals safe distance. And the same thing on the other side. And we don't want to merge that. All right, let's save. Okay, so we've got our 
basic shape down. So this has to have teeth coming up and down. So I'll just hide those, get them out of the way, hide these planes. And sketch on here. And I think I'm going to have the first teeth starting right at the edge. And it's going to be material thickness. And for now, they'll be where all right thinking if I should uh, do a formula type deal or yeah I think I'll just uh, do a fixed number of teeth Get an idea of what I've got. I think eight works. That didn't quite do what I wanted. <laughs> Let's make this construction line in here and say that's equal. And then maybe that will work better. There we go. And let's go up to there. And I'll reuse that sketch again. And just merge with this one. All right, so we've got our upward teeth there. Get this out of the way. We need upward teeth and downward teeth here as well. And I think I will have a gap to start here. And try to reduce or try to minimize the number of uh, relations I need. If I can just do a coincident rather than uh, type in an equals thing. And draw that in. And then I'll draw another one because I'll need it soon enough. And then I'll draw another one here because I'll need it soon enough. Select this chain, select this chain, do a linear pattern, 8.8, 10 maybe, 9, looks about perfect. Alright, let's just delete this and draw in a new one. It'll make it easier, I think. Make sure those are both for construction. That's equal. Then last thing there. Those are all set. And then I'll reuse that sketch on the other, si other side. All right. I suppose I don't need these surfaces anymore. 
And let's see, I'm going to need fingers from this going into this and the other side as well. And let's see those again. So let's cut there. So I don't want to start right at the edge of these fingers. I want to have a, a gap first. Let's do an equal there. Put a dimension for the time being. This construction line in and say it's equal. And we'll do a pattern going this way 8.8, 5, 4. It won't get out of the way. Four works. that for construction and equal. And then should have done this in the first place, but all well. Say collinear and equal, and then I'll just get rid of this horizontal. I realize I still have this dimension here, which I don't want that dimension there. I want to drive it just by a bunch of equals. So, all right, I'm gonna edit this pattern and add these four lines in. And go there. Use that sketch on the opposite side. All right. So that's set. I'm going to draw in here. I'm just going to convert the whole face, do an extruded cut up to the other side of it, but it's only going to apply to these two. I do the same thing again on the opposite side. And it only applies to these two, except I can get a little bit more out of those two cuts. I say that it also applies to the top and bottom. And, and SOLIDWORKS is going a little bit slow with that, but okay. All right, so this panel and this panel on the opposite side are fully uh, fully toothed. Uh, so we need a little bit more cutting there. Now that I look at it, I, I should have a start with a gap here. And it'll take a second. Let's get rid of this coincident. Let's drop this down to seven. Do a coincident over here. No, wait, we don't want a coincident over there. That's the whole point of what we're doing. <laughs> So 
draw on a couple of construction lines. And that should let us do it. I'm not sure what happened down there. Hmm. Do a few control Z's then. Let's see. Oh, this is coincidence still. Say so I make it coincident with that. And now what happens if I go equal? It's at least less messed up. equal with that. All right. Not sure why it, there we go. And if I coincident that, that's good. See if it freaks out. All right, so let's bring the top back. And we're kind of going to do the same thing again that we did before. So just copying that face, doing a cut to match that face, but in a different piece. And then we could just uh, reuse that. So, all right, so this has teeth on all four sides. It slots into holes all around. This has connections all four sides, slots into holes all around. And let's hide that. So our Raspi is buried down in there. And it's got a bunch of things that are interfering with these pieces. So let's see, what can I do about that? I think for starters, I am going to draw basically the rectangle of the circuit board. So I need to hide some pieces. So that's there. That's there. And like that. And that. All right. And hide this face as well, because I want to put this on the face of the board once it lets me. Bring just one of these back. Do a cut up to here. And for now, it's just going to be that. Then I can show all these other pieces. And then I can edit this feature. And make it so that the cut includes the other four body or the three bodies. So now, if we hide this for a second, we've got cuts or 
shallow cuts and gravings really that the circuit board can drop into. All right, so then we need to start going along the sides and uh, dealing with holes for connectors. So I'm going to convert these, do a through all only in this. And then we've got another connector right there. Select this, offset it by say two. And I'll cut that through as well. Looks like the rest of that side is sort sorted. Let's see. Don't think I have any connectors that have to go through here. I might set it up so that like a ribbon cable could go through the side. Yeah, that would make sense. And since a ribbon cable sometimes has a big head on it, and I only want the cut to be big enough for like a ribbon cable, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. So this is the center. So I'm just going to make a little rectangle here. And make that midpoint, midpoint. And uh, ribbon cable, the upper limit is about two millimeters thick. Yeah, I'll go up to 2.54. Beyond that, it just stops working. Uh, so let's extrude cut. And I want to go to there. All right, so now you can slide in your ribbon cable. I am wondering though, that's the best way, but I don't see any better way other than coming through the top. And then we need a bigger hole for the thing to go through, for the head head to go through. Uh, so yeah, this I think will work, I guess. So that side's sorted. Let's see, we have this side, and let's sketch on here. Hide this and let's make a rectangle. That completely encompasses this whole thing. All right, so that's at the card slot itself. I would say you only need the card, but you kind of need the whole space, in my experience. Um, and actually, you want a little bit more than the whole, whole space. So I'm going to offset this by uh, 0.5, so making it a total of a millimeter bigger. And just have to find that piece. All right, got a nice little spot there. And that's the only thing on that side of the board. So let's save real quick. All right, so now we've got these on this side of the board. Let's start a new sketch here, hide this, and 
I need a rectangle, another rectangle. Yeah, just some rectangles. So let's start working with the furthest out part of them. And just do a bunch of coincidences. Coincidence I. Just want the farthest out part of everything, even if it's just something like this. And I'm going to try doing a coincidence there. All right. So this one's taller, but it looks like this one might be wider. 14.9, 14.5. Excuse me. I'm going to make a new rectangle here. It's going to be equal. And so then I've got openings for all those parts. Let me get that face, that body back. And that construction as well. All right, so we got some pretty thin material right there, pretty thin right there, but I'm not sure how to actually actually deal with that, just given the space constraints. So, let's see, we've got the cutouts on all the sides. We've got a way to support the board. We've got a way for all these pieces to slot in with each other. Uh, still don't have the fan located. And still don't have access to this or this. So I think I will try to locate the fan first. And that is 40. All right, that takes up a good amount of space. Let's go normal to this. All right, so this rectangle would be the fan. And I don't really see any way that it can completely avoid covering at least one of them. Uh, I think we should try to go for covering them equally. That way there's a little bit of room to kind of slide around. And then, I, then they're both usable that way. So, convert those, convert that. That. All right. Make all those for construction. And put a rectangle down. And I'll put a rectangle there as well. Stretch these rectangles off the 
off the view or off the part for construction. And I'm going to draw a line from there to there and from there to there. This is going to be horizontal. This is going to be vertical. So we've got our location of our fan locked down that way at least. So let's get this actually out of the way. So then I just have to decide how I want it located this way. And let's see if I can get away with doing it right, right in the center. So it's nice and symmetrical, sort of. All right, well, that actually basically works. Okay. Let's make a surface so it's easier to do the move copy bodies. Here and there. And then I don't need this anymore. All right. So now I got to cut a hole here, reference to something that's behind it. So let's just hide this stuff. All right, I can see enough now. And this is 3.5. So I'm going to go with a, uh, I think a four millimeter hole. So we've got a little bit of bite there. And then I'll do an offset here. Let's see, it's equal to safe distance. I'll make a circle here that's concentric with this one. Make this for construction and then go tangent. And do an extruded cut through all on this. And let me hide everything else for the time being. So we got the opening for the fan. I don't want to have to have a, uh, a separate uh, grill. So go Something like this, and something like that. Let's say these are our parallel and equal. These are parallel and equal. These are our parallel. These are perpendicular. These are equal. So we convert this and draw a line coincident, coincident. So under 10 and you're not going to be able to get fingers in there too easily. But then these are way too big. Actually, I want I can just set these to the size I want and figure it out from there. So right now this is 15.7. That's definitely too big of an opening. 
So let me try a uh, three-point rectangle here and a three-point rectangle there. Go coincident and coincident. And these are 45 degrees apart. And these are 45 degrees apart. And those are all equal. That's fully defined. And now, go like that. 11 millimeters. I think uh, I think even getting a pinky finger in there is pretty difficult at that point. So got some junk in there, but I'm just gonna make a new sketch, and I'll just take the bits that I want. And we gotta do all sorts of trimming at the middle. Trim all this out. And I got some kind of issue along the way there. All right, it's fully defined again. All right, then say we had a uh, 0.5 fillet. It's a very small fillet. I don't want to come to, come to that sharp corner like that. Even though I won't cut you or anything, but it just doesn't look right. All right, then I need to trim the excess parts of the circle. Let's see how that looks. All right, it's simple. It works. So let's show everything again. Right. So what else we need? Uh, the next thing I'm thinking is openings for these. So just let me sketch up here. And I need a couple of rectangles. And I don't know if they're going to have the same width but they should have the same thickness. And that thickness is gonna be one millimeter, which is pretty generous for a flat, flat, flat flex cable. And go here to here, do a coincident. Go here to there, do a coincident. And Let's get this out of the way. And this out of the way, I guess, too. We can bring it back when we need to actually use it. So, coincident. And SolidWorks freeze for a second. And coincident. All right. Show those. So we got the sides locked down at least. Check if they are the same. Oh, they are the same. Okay. Well, they ended up the same anyway that way. So I think I'd want to move this to be equally between, except that there is actually something that's going to get in the way, possibly.
So let's lock that down. Say that's 40. All right. So equally between, I think, would be across that line. Test. Say that these are equal and parallel. Oh, so it would not be across the line. Brilliant. And that's where that is going. And this one, I guess we can go right on the line. All right. That looks good. And apparently I have other garbage in here. All right. So we've got the, got the slots, got the vent, the fan, got holes for all the connectors. Um, Oh, so we've got we've got air coming in or going out, depending on how the fan is placed. We have nowhere for it to go, which I was originally thinking that it would be primarily going through the side, but now the side's kind of weakened. So now I, th I think it's going to end up going through the front here. So... Gonna make some vents. And I'm gonna make two of these at once. I think I missed something there. It's just gonna go tangent and collinear and tangent. And safe distance. And then I just have to decide how wide I want the vents to be. Maybe uh, eight. It's a good starting place at least. And then that would be eight plus four ish. So we'd have four vents in the front that way. All right. There are four relatively large vents. They're actually going to be a little bit bigger. So they are a little over nine. So that works. Uh, would work if it wasn't breaking those. So we'll have to modify these. Those equal. Make those coincident, make those equal, and make it a circle. That circle is going to be safe distance away, and it's going to be for construction, and it's going to be tangent with that. All right. So now we got nice big vents. About nine millimeters wide 
opening, so you can't quite get a finger in there. Uh, I suppose other things like screws might drop in there, but uh, I don't plan to have screws hanging around over the top of this, I guess, so I'm not too worried about that. Got a slot if I want to add a component with a ribbon cable type deal. I've got slots for the two connectors. I've got the Heatsink in place, got the fan in place, everything fits. And yeah, I'm just looking for anything that's not done. Only thing I'm seeing is um, make this new variable for it. The assembly uh, chamfer I like to do. So, get down to just this one part. And normally I would do this with a, a sketch that's driven by, you know, a formula or something. You know, the same formula that's driving the, the number of teeth. But since this is a fixed number of teeth, and this requires less thinking, I will just do it this way. And just grab all these. And I can kind of reuse those. This is a really big model. I wouldn't want to do all this stuff, but it's small enough that I can get away with being incredibly sloppy. So that just kind of transfers the chamfers over to that one. Let's hide these pieces. And let's go from here. I am thinking it's going to be easier to just draw up these. go. Actually, do the bottom ones as well. Smear those around that. And do a coincident at the bottom. Linear pattern, say eight, I don't remember what it was. I guess nine that would be. All right. And gonna make those all equal. Make a, another line that's gonna be perpendicular. Or construction and equal. Grab these. Say I wanna mirror them around that. And then just drag a box like just what I want. Linear going down four. And lock 
this down. Fully defined. Okay. So that's uh, two slightly different ways of putting fillets on something. See, this doesn't need fillets. Could use some rounded corners. Yeah, I could definitely use some rounded corners. So, once the sun freezes. Make this tangent twice, and it's already coincident at one end, so that locks it down. All right, I'm gonna draw a line there, draw a line there. These are perpendicular, equal for construction. These are perpendicular. Let's take this, Let's say I want a mirror around that, okay. And take both of those, say I want a mirror around that. And I'll go down to the other end, coincident, and coincident, fully defined, extrude cut through all, both. All right, looks a little bit better. So, am I showing everything right now? I am. All right, so that's sorted, that's sorted. That's sorted on all sides, that's sorted on all sides. So I hide those. And that's sorted as well. Beautiful. All right, so now there's option for graphics. And then I, of course, still have to do a flat layout and curve offsets and all that. All right, so got the lettering on the side. And I had uh, just four vents back here, but I decided to split them up and make them eight vents. And I made eight matching vents here as well. Uh, other than that, I didn't really touch anything other than uh, grabbing a few parts so that I could go uh, here. And then I'm going to move copy bodies to be concentric. And that's going to be coincident. All right. Hide this. I should hide everything but that. And I'll put a axis there so that I can put a plane there. It's going to be, uh, let's say it's parallel with that. And let's normal to that. And sketch on that. So what I want is basically some steps because I, I can't cut this shape but I can cut small steps that come close to that shape so it's going to be like this kind of Let's see how that turned out so far so I'm going to make these all equal and parallel Make those parallel. And I'll make all these equal and parallel. And perpendicular. Let's say each step is going to be about half a millimeter. All right. That last, last one could just be the hole, I think, but 
Yeah, I'm not sure if that's ideal to do it that way. Hmm. I think it I think it should be fine if I just go to there. All right, and make that parallel. Make uh, two more lines here. And then I can do a revolve. Actually, I want a boss. Revolve boss. All right, show things again in that top panel anyway. Hide this just for the moment. Hide these. Put a sketch up here. And then I can show this again. Select this sketch. Pattern that. Delete the original one. All right, so now this is definitely too close. So could go back and fix it beforehand, but I want it to be driven off of this screw head, so. Just kind of drive it off the old one. And I don't know if it'll let me grab that. It'll let me grab that. So let's offset. Let's say that's equal to safe distance. Uh, well, it's not, it's only an engrave. Our construction, make those tangent. That's gonna be the new cut. Before I can do the new cut though, I gotta fill in the old. I guess I could do the new first, but. Up to surface. And sketch, let's convert this. We can hide this and this. And we'll do a cut. All right. Then we can do a combine, subtract, get rid of these. Then when I'm uh, preparing it for cut, I'll make each of these lines a different color. So basically it'll engrave this down about you know, half a millimeter or so. And it'll engrave the whole area, including this and this and this. It'll, it'll engrave all of it. Then it'll just engrave this area half a millimeter more down. And then this will be another half a millimeter and this another half a millimeter. And then when it's all done, the center one, it'll just cut out whatever's left. And that way we can use uh, flush flathead screws on something that's laser cut. So if you've been watching this long, a little bonus trip, trick there. Uh, all right, so we've got the way to attach the fan. Got all the holes and all that. I'm gonna click save. The only thing I'm still thinking of as far as a problem is that right now, basically relying on friction to keep it closed, which is not ideal. Uh, I mean, sometimes friction keeps it closed really well, so well that you have to break it to get it open. Sometimes friction doesn't keep it closed at all, and it's wood, so it swells, it shrinks, and warps, and does everything else that you don't want it to do. Um, so, I want to include something that will actually uh, 
positively keep it closed. And before I made that five millimeters, which is good because I have some spacers that are going to be necessary for this next step. And we'll just drop that there. Alright, got that down. And looks like it does scrape the edge a little bit, but in the real world, these aren't hard corners. They're rounded a little bit. So it would just barely get away with putting it there. Uh, so I'm going to draw a sketch that's just going to have some circles. I see circles. Sketch full of points. <laughs> and you can pattern that. All right. So then we've got screw coming into the bottom, going through there, <clears throat> and into another one. And need that other one. So that'll be 20 millimeter. And I'm actually going to move this up. And I'm going to roll this back for a second. Go pre-pattern. So that I can go ahead and pattern both of them at the same time with the same feature. And that's coincident there. Just make those parallel as well. And then we'd also want the screw. It's coming in from the bottom, as long as we're going to include multiple things in this pattern. So let's insert part. And... See, this is 14 or an 8. I definitely need more than 8, so we'll try a 14. So let's move copy bodies on this guy. And that's coincident. And then I can't see anything else, so let's hide this. And this is going to be concentric, unless it lets me. And we'll throw in a parallel just because. Let's hide this so I can see. So that screw goes in there pretty well, and let's see, if I bring this back, and I go mirror, or no, I want a plane, all right, now I bring this forward, and I tell it I want to add some bodies. Come on, there we go. And great, I can't actually click on that one, so I have to hide this again. Then edit this pattern again. Wait for it to load again. And 
and I'm going to do that one too. So then we got this plane. What do I want to do with that? Oh, I can mirror this, 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 and this across. And clearly I need longer than 14 millimeter, but I think I have some 20s. The head is the same size, and that's what I'm most concerned with right now. And let's see, we can hide that. And we are we showing everything except for that and that. All right, so grab those and hide them. Grab that and hide it. And which means this one needs to go away. So grab that and hide it. Grab that and hide it, which means both of those need to go away too. All right, hide everything so I can show everything. Pull the side out of the way. So the screw goes into the bottom, goes through there, through the board, into there. That locks the board in place. Right, not that it really needs it anyway. But also locks this to the board. And then from the top, we'll also have some screws coming down in this way. And for those, we need to make some adjustments. So I'm going to sketch on here, but then I'm going to hide it. Actually, I'm going to hide everything with those four screws. Even though they're on the other side, they're convenient to work with. So going to convert the outsides of these. Oh, missed one. And I'm going to select these in for construction. I want to offset by 0.25. So an extra half millimeter total which is all I really need for this. All right. And I'm going to do an extruded cut. Doesn't matter how deep it is for this step. Because then I'm going to edit that cut. I need to hide one more thing to actually do what I want to do. So hide that. Then let's edit this cut. And slowly, slowly. Let's go up to here. Just for sanity check, two and a half. So that would leave me at least two millimeters of material. Or maybe not at least, but oh, right around. And uh, gonna need those on the other side as well. So let's hide that, sketch on that. And Convert that and let's do an extruded cut. Only applies to this. Then we hide this, edit the cut, and we're going to do an up to surface as soon as it lets me. Right. Let's hide, then show. All right, so now I got the screws to hold it together front and back. We've got for the flat head, we've got the angles. All right. So there you go. All it needs at this point is a kerf and a flat layout. So I'm going to do that.
Oh, one other thing to add is that, well, I did make a cutout for the head. I did not make a cutout for the screw shafts themselves. So I'll just draw in four circles here. And four millimeter. Oh no, wait, this, these are uh, 2.5 millimeters. And I'll do a cut going through all, but only applying to the top and bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to my flat layout and kerf. Okay, so the flat is done, the kerf is done, and I added uh, a little bit of graphics. And uh, this circle here, I'm gonna use uh, to put my logo on. It's just not very friendly for 3D stuff, so I'll put that in right before I get ready to burn. And uh, like I said, these will be, like this will be light blue, this will be slightly darker blue, slightly darker blue, slightly darker blue and then of course cut and each one of those will be a uh, about a half millimeter cut so they'll add to each other until it gets down to there and then obviously it just cuts out the hole uh, kind of same deal here except there's just one color it's gonna engrave it all down then cut out the hole and same deal over here so i am gonna find some wood to make this out of and uh, change my variables to suit and export this and, uh, and I'll be back with a completed box.